find the sum of the arithmetic series. So we want to find the sum and it's arithmetic. We actually have two um, formulas to help us find that sum. Our first one right here and here's our second one. And you know either they both will give us the same answer and we just want to figure out you know which one might be more appropriate for us to use depending on what we know about um, our arithmetic series. So let's look at what we know about the arithmetic series. I notice both of these have an n value and the first term, so we want to make sure we can get that. Now n is going to be your um, total number of terms in the series. And if you're starting with a 1 and you're going up to 18, that means that you are going to have 18 terms. So our n value is going to be 18. Now the first term, you know, I look at this and they didn't give us the first term. A lot of people want to say the first term was a 1 because of this one down here. But that one actually will give us the first term. In order to get the term, we have to use the rule. We have to plug it in right there. So to get the first term, we're going to do 14 minus 6 times 1. And we get our first term is 8. And so now, if we look back at our rules, this one on the bottom uses the common difference. This one on the top uses, now this a sub n from the sum formula is going to be the last term of the series. And with the example we're given, we actually can find both of these um, without too much work. Now, here's the rule for the arithmetic series. And the way that these always simplify, your common difference is actually always going to be with the variable. So right now, I know that the common difference is going to be that negative 6. So with this information, the n, the a sub 1, and the d, we can go ahead and use this formula down here. Um, I personally prefer the one on top just because it seems like there's less, um, I don't know, less work it looks like to me. So let's see, could we even use that top one, which means we need the last term. Well, how would we find the last term? And that's where we look up here. The last term is going to be found by plugging an 18 in for the k. So a sub 18 is our last term. And we do 14 minus 6 times 18 and we get negative 94. So we have information to use either formula. Even though I said I like this top one better, I think more mistakes are made on this one, so I'm actually going to show this one and just talk about what we need to be careful of. So we have 1 half times n, and n is 18, our number of terms. Here's my first parentheses. 2 times our first term, which is 8, plus Here's that second set of parentheses, um, n, so 18 minus 1, and then times d, which is a negative 6. And then make sure you close off your parentheses. So we have to work inside the parentheses to simplify in here. Um, I would start inside the innermost parentheses. We know that this is 18 minus 1, so we have a 17 times a negative 6. And then 2 times 8, I'll just go ahead and put, I know that's 16. So 16 plus 17 times negative 6. Following order of operations, we, knew, we know we have to do the 17 times a negative 6 first. We get negative 102. And then when we add these together, 16 plus a negative 102. And we get negative 86, I think. Yes. All right, so we simplified everything inside the parentheses, and now on the outside, half of 18 is 9, so we're going to multiply 9 times this negative 86, and our final answer is going to be a negative 774 for the sum of this arithmetic series. Now, we could have done it by hand. That would have involved taking all 18 terms, adding them together, um, but this is certainly going to be a lot less work if we recognize it's arithmetic, which means we have a formula we can use to help us out. So just find the correct formula with you know what you're given and then be careful when you're simplifying.